Hi friends, it's really great to be with you again this evening. Uh, let's start off tonight with a short quiz, okay? And it's a one question quiz, so it's really easy. And here's the question. Do you know how many people that work to develop vaccines have been awarded a Nobel Prize in medicine or physiology? Guess. The answer is one. Someone called Max Tyler who developed the yellow fever vaccine and was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1951. So what's your guess? Do you think the scientists or the team that will develop the COVID-19 vaccine will be given a Nobel Prize? So if you believe they will be given a Nobel Prize, thumbs up. Or if you don't think they will get the Nobel Prize, thumbs down. And if you're not sure, then you can do this. Now, whether or not he or she will get a Nobel Prize, the world will probably award them many titles and acclamation. Recently, I had a cup of coffee with a friend of mine who is an agnostic. An agnostic is someone who doesn't know whether there is a God or even if such a thing is knowable. An atheist, on the other hand, is someone who doesn't believe in the existence of a God or any gods. Well, this friend of mine introduced me to a book named The Power of Myth. One topic that the author speaks of in this book is that of the classic hero story. All hero stories, he says, include the following theme, departure, fulfillment, and return. So Luke Skywalker in Star Wars departs to train with Yoda and then returns to save the rebels or Rey in episode 8 of Star Wars trains with Luke on Aktu and then returns to save the rebels, or Neo in The Matrix departs for training with Morpheus and returns to overcome Agent Smith, or Daniel with Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid, Thor, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, King Arthur, Gautama Buddha, and the list of hero movies from Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood, and it goes on and on and on. So this friend of mine posits, or he, 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 he makes this assertion that Jesus Christ is no different. He's also a myth. And his, his, the narrative of Jesus is that of departure, fulfillment, and return. So Jesus was a myth in his eyes. As a teenager, I remember receiving evangelistic training and it was called Christianity Explored. After the training, we had to recruit friends to do the multi-week study with us. It was uh, quite exhilarating, to be honest, but also scary at the same time. I think I was maybe 14 or 15 years old. Later, I realized that the training was actually based on uh, C.S. Lewis's apologetic musings in mere Christianity. Very simply put, was Jesus a liar, a lunatic, or was he Lord? If you study in depth the crucifixion account, and I actually want to encourage everyone to do so, you will very quickly realize that the price Jesus paid on the cross for my and your sin was, was actually a substantial one, a very, very painful and costly one. It will also probably help you not take for granted the Holy Communion uh, or the Lord's Supper. Well, if you study in depth the crucifixion account, um, you know, any liar wouldn't have put himself through that kind of torture of the crucifixion. Uh, he would have cut the act quite quickly. So Jesus wasn't a liar. Well, if he wasn't a liar, then he must have been a lunatic, is the next assertion. Uh, a crazy, wacko, basket case who wasn't afraid of the torture. He might even have been looking forward to it. But this couldn't be true either because uh, even the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and present-day historians were blown away by Jesus' grasp of philosophy and theology, his wisdom, and obviously his selfless, sacrificial, non-violent conduct. So Jesus wasn't a liar and neither was he a lunatic. So that leaves us only one option. Jesus was and is Lord. His power was clearly demonstrated in 20 miracles illustrated in the book of Mark, 
or some would say 37 miracles across all of the Gospels. And if Jesus is Lord, then his words can be relied upon. Let me read for us John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So as you read this passage, what are some things that come to you? Well, let me list out a few that are quite obvious to me. Firstly, Jesus encourages us to believe in him. Secondly, Jesus is actually preparing a place for us. He's going ahead of us. He will be ready for us. And there is abundance. We won't be excluded. In his house are many rooms. The third is Jesus will return. He will take us with him and we will stay with him. The fourth is, this world is not my home. Let's live for the line, not the dot. Eternity is a really long time. Uh, Earth is purely temporary. The fifth is, the way is not a concept, it's a person. Truth is not a construct, it is a person. The promise of life is not abstract, it is a person. And that person is Jesus. Six, if you want to go to God, then get to know Jesus. Seven, if you want to know God, then get to know Jesus. Eight, if you want to see God, then get to know Jesus. Nine, and because we have Jesus now, we also have God, our Father, present with us. He is here. He is here. You are not alone. I am not alone. We are not alone. So are you bored by the lockdown? Are you anxious during the lockdown? Are you dreading an extension to the lockdown? Or maybe you're too busy during the lockdown? Well, my encouragement is that you try and attempt or attempt to read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I would include Acts in there. Uh, I would encourage you to read all the five uh, books in the Gospels. And when you have finished, start again. And when you finish, start again. If you have uncapped internet, then it's great. Let it play in the background uh, as an audio Bible for you to listen to. If you don't have uncapped internet and you have children, then maybe pay your kids to read every chapter out loud. And uh, they'll gain something and you probably will gain something too. So let me end this evening's encouragement with the following prayer by John Piper. Therefore, you who trust the Lord Jesus, let not your heart be troubled because there's a place for you in my Father's house. Let not your heart be troubled because Jesus prepared the place for you. He opened the way. He is the way. Let not your heart be troubled because Jesus himself is your dwelling place and he will come and take you to himself. Let not your heart be troubled because Jesus and the Father are one. So that if you have Jesus, you have the heart. Father, let not your heart be troubled because Jesus has come in the Holy Spirit. He is with you now and he will be with you always, not as an observer, but a helper. So this could be a great time for you to pause the video and discuss the following. What step of immediate obedience can you take in the next 30 minutes? And uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you and all glory to God alone. Soli Deo Gloria. Have a good evening.